Good morning children. Welcome to the next session of geography wherein we are going to study about natural vegetation and wildlife. But before I go into this, let me talk about what you had studied in the previous lesson on climate. We had studied about the climate of both India and Brazil. We had said that the climate of India is of tropical monsoon type and in Brazil we can have both tropical and the temperate type of climate. India receives its rainfall from the southwest monsoon winds as well as the northeast retreating monsoon winds whereas Brazil gets its rainfall from southeast trade winds. Right then children, let's come back to this lesson that is natural vegetation and wildlife. What is vegetation? Vegetation stands for the flora of a region or plant life. In other words, it's a general term for the plant life of a region. It refers to the ground cover provided by plants and is by far the most abundant biotic element of the biosphere. Now, why is vegetation important? Vegetation is important because it releases the flow of numerous biochemical cycles like the water cycle, carbon cycle and nitrogen cycle. Plants provide oxygen to the entire ecosystem through the process of photosynthesis. Plants also provide shelter to animals and birds. The dead and decayed matter which is called as humus, increases the fertility of the soil. Plants absorb carbon dioxide, which is released by animals during the process of respiration. Plants provide food to the entire living organism with a source of energy to them. Vegetation also affects weather and climate. If there's no vegetation, we can have no transpiration to cool the air. Next is, let us discuss about the factors which affect vegetation. The following are the factors. They are the types of land, soil, temperature, photo period and precipitation. We are going to deal with each of these factors in detail. Let's come to the type of land. Type of land means whether it's on the mountains, plateaus, plains, deserts, or uneven terrain, or even the grasslands. Soil. Soil affects the type of vegetation, whether alluvial, delta, or desert. Now, mangrove forests grow well in wet, moist, swampy, deltaic soil. Thorny shrubs like cacti grow well in regions of deserts. Temperature. Temperature affects vegetation. Temperature also affects humidity, precipitation and the type of soil. As you move further away from the equator to higher altitudes or even latitudes, we find temperature goes on decreasing. And hence we find pine trees grow in regions of higher altitude. Further up, we find only seasonally flowering plants or mosses and lichens. The next factor is photo period. Photo period refers to the period of sunlight 
which a tree receives. Now regions which are on either side of the equator receive more periods of sunlight or those trees which receive more sunlight show luxuriant growth. At the same time, the amount of sunlight also increases during summer months and this is when trees show rich growth. Next is precipitation. Precipitation also affects the type of vegetation. Precipitation refers to the amount of rainfall received. Trees which grow in the equatorial region receive plenty of rainfall and hence you find we have tall trees. On the other hand, trees growing in regions which receive 250 mm of rainfall show skies growth. Now, here we are going to study about the type of forest in India. We can broadly classify forests in India into five. They are the tropical evergreen forests, tropical deciduous forests, thorny shrubs, Himalayan forests, and coastal forests or littoral forests. Here on the map of India, we have all the different five different types of forests. We'll do these forests in detail. Now let's come to tropical evergreen forests. Tropical evergreen forests are found in regions which receive more than 2000 mm of rainfall and with a temperature of about 25 to 30 degree centigrade. Trees are tall hardwood and trees growing here are usually mahogany, ebony, rosewood, rubber, etc. In India, the following regions have evergreen forests. These are the regions which receive plenty of rainfall. That is the western part of the western ghats, northeastern part of India, that is Assam, Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, the Terai regions of Himalayas, Lakshadweep, and Andaman Islands. These trees grow to great heights, that is more than 11 meters. The leaves form a canopy and sunlight can rarely enter the ground. Along the ground, we can have giant liners or creepers. Highest biodiversity is seen in these forests. Evergreen trees, as the name denotes, are trees where there is no definite time for shedding of leaves. Next is deciduous forest. As the name suggests, deciduous means these forests shed their leaves seasonally. That is either at the beginning of summer or winter. These trees are found in regions which receive less than 2000 mm of rainfall. Trees seen here are teak, bamboo, banyan, peepal, etc. Deciduous forests are also known as monsoon forests. In India, we find more trees are of deciduous type. They are found along the lower slopes of the Himalayan region, West Bengal, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra and Karnataka. The next forests that I am going to describe here are thorny shrubs. 
children can you see this diagram here you'll find certain leaf like structures green in color you can see some thorns can you make out what these green structures are they are actually modification of the stem now this is known as philoclad okay where do you find it as you know these are found in regions where the amount of rainfall is very low that is in desert regions okay now as i said thorny shrubs are found in regions which receive less than 250 mm of rainfall and remember these trees here show xerophytic adaptations the roots are long and they penetrate deep into the soil in search of water. The leaf is modified into spines as I told you here and the stems. The stems carry on the function of the leaf and they are flattened and green as you can see over here. Right? Okay. Now, examples are Katechu, Acacia, Kejri, Cacti, for example, like Aloe Vera. Then we have trees like, you know, which show xerophytic adaptations like Babul, which is an excellent fodder for camels. In India, thorny shrubs are usually found in semi arid parts of Gujarat. Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana and the Deccan region. Now, next comes to coastal forests. You might have understood where these forests are found. As the name denotes, they are seen along coastal regions. They are found along the swampy regions, along estuaries and lagoons. In India, we have 4,461 square area under mangrove vegetation all along the western and the eastern part of India. And in the western part, from Gujarat to Kerala and on the eastern part from West Bengal to Tamil Nadu and even along the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The mangrove forest seen in Sundarbans is the world's largest coastal wetland. Coastal forests can be seen in wet, moist, swampy, deltaic soil. The soil again you find is saline. These trees which grow here show certain adaptations to grow in the saline region. They have certain rock roots or stilt roots which help them to stay firm in the soil. The wood is oily, light and durable and is used for making boats. Coastal forests provide breeding grounds as well as nursery for fishes, prawns, crabs. They also provide wood, timber, honey for the tribal people who live in these regions. Coastal forests are ecologically very, very important because they provide, they protect the coastal areas from the devastating effects of floods, typhoons, cyclones, tsunamis, etc. Hence, as I said, they are very important. The next forest that I am going to discuss is the Himalayan forest. As the name denotes, they have to be seen in the Himalayan region. We have three types of forests in the Himalayas according to altitude. We have the wet temperate type of forests 
or the evergreen broad leaf forests situated at an altitude between 1000 to 2000 meters oak and chestnut are the predominant trees here next is the temperate forest also known as coniferous forest situated between 1500 to 3000 meters here we have trees like salopa pine birch etc above the temperate forests up to about 3500 meters are the grasslands and beyond the grasslands we find alpine vegetation here we find the temperature may go below the freezing point and we can have seasonally flowering plants and occasionally mosses and lichens. Again, as we move up the higher altitudes of the Himalayas, we find vegetation goes on becoming scarce. This is because temperature decreases as we move away from the equator. It may go below minus 40 degrees centigrade as in the case of Jammu and Kashmir where we have snowfall. Vegetation cannot grow in regions of snowfall and hence you find in the higher altitudes of the Himalayas vegetation is scarce. Now, what is wildlife? Here, I'm going to discuss about the wildlife of India. Where is this wildlife? It has to be in the wild, in the jungles. It refers to the undomesticated animal species, but has come to include all organisms that grow or live wild in an area without being introduced by humans. Wildlife can be found in all the ecosystems. In India, we have as such, out of the 12 mega diversity areas in the world, India is one of them. We have many species of wild animals in India. The elephants can be seen in the humid regions, we have the tigers, the lions, the one hunt rhino we can see in Assam, and even the birds, kingfishers, pigeons, and ducks. Apart from this, along the dry, arid regions, we have the camel and the asses. Along the estuaries, we have the crocodiles and the gharials. But it's sad to say that in the recent years, wildlife in India has been decreasing. This is due to various reasons. Due to increase in population, more and more land or rather forests have been cut down to pave way for housing for industries such that we find we are pushing ourselves further and further into the habitat of wild animals. Poaching, smuggling, etc. also has led to the decline in wildlife. Overfishing in the rivers have resulted in the decline of fishes. But there's always something to cheer about. Various schemes have been put forth by the government as a result of which we have various national parks and sanctuaries throughout India. As a result, many of the animals which were on the verge of extinction like the tiger, the one-horned, rhino etc have shown remarkable increase 
For example, in Jim Corbett National Park, Ranthambore National Park that is in Rajasthan and Kanha, we have more than 3,000 tigers. In Kaziranga and Manas in Assam, we have 3,251 horned rhino. Rhino is also seen in Dudhwa in Uttar Pradesh. The Gir forests in Gujarat have more than 650 lions. Lion is also found in Kunal in Madhya Pradesh. Periyar Sanctuary in Kerala is famous for elephants and tigers. The white Bengal tiger is seen in Sundarbans and West Bengal. In India, we have many bird sanctuaries. But here I have given you the names of only three. The Skarnala in Maharashtra, Chilika in Orissa and Kumarakam The next topic, a very important one, is preservation of wildlife. Why preservation? Let's look into this. India has some of the most biodiverse regions in the world and it comprises four of the 35 biodiversity hotspots in the world like Western Ghats, Eastern Himalayas, Indo, Burma and Nicobar Islands. India has 120 national parks, 515 wildlife sanctuaries, 26 wetlands and 18 bio reserves. With all these, it is imperative that we cannot lose these wildlife. Some of the species are almost endemic to India and hence we need to preserve them for posterity. I hope children you have understood this lesson. Well, thank you.